know, um, a lot of the things that Aaron talked about there can be translated over into this, having the discussions with the people in your club, talking about what we're trying to do, uh, how we're trying to communicate with the public. So I'm going to talk here about social media and communications. Um, so as I said earlier, I don't need to get into this, work for Rugby Canada for a long time, blah, 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 blah. So I'm going to show you this slide right now, and then we're going to come back to it at the end. So successful communication, content, messaging slash voice slash branding, timing, and platform. Those are the four things that I want you to think about during, the, during my presentation, and we'll circle back at the end. So growing your guys, I created this uh, PowerPoint presentation because I wanted to help uh, the member unions for Rugby America's North. So Canada, USA, Mexico, but then there's Trinidad and Tobago, Curacao, Jamaica, uh, et cetera, a lot of the smaller unions that are helping them build their social media platforms from the beginning. I imagine a lot of the clubs in, in Rugby Ontario will have platforms. Has anyone put something up on Facebook in a while? Maybe not. Maybe someone hasn't posted on, on Instagram in six months. Maybe the website has players from the 2014 season. Maybe the YouTube page hasn't had a video updated uh, uploaded to it in the last three years. These are the, the things that we can get into. So I'm going to go through these really quickly. I'll send out the PowerPoint afterwards so you guys have it and you always can reach out to me, but I'm going to go through this really quickly. Just I am conscious of time. So in terms of number one, are your channels up to date? It's really important for you guys to have all of the information required on your channels front and center. Hi, I'm a parent of a, a 10 year old girl that wants to play rugby. How do I find the coach's name? How do I get, get in touch with the manager? When is practice? Where is practice? How do I find the field? Are you following the right people on your social media pages? Social media is meant to be a discussion. It's meant to be engaging. It's meant to be creating a community. You can't just be putting out content and not following people, not engaging, not creating discussions. You need to make sure that you're following coaches, players, referees, sponsors, clubs, supporters, governing bodies, everyone in your community to create the following on social media. So we're going to get into this one. And this is one of the big topics I'm going to talk about is who runs the channels at your club. So we'll get into a bit more detail in terms of Facebook and Twitter and TikTok and Instagram and website and things like that. I want you to have discussions with your clubs around who runs these channels. Who is leading the Facebook page? Do you have 25 different people posting things to the Facebook page that all look different, that are all overlapping each other and the graphics don't look the same? Well, maybe that needs to be reined in a little bit. Do you have no one running the Twitter account? Do you have someone who's maybe not tech savvy running one of your channels that you should be well this is a good time for you guys to come in and say okay who has the passwords to all of these accounts how can i streamline the process and how can i make this successful not only when the time you guys are there but moving forward i want you guys to set your clubs up for success there's no point in you guys coming in and running the channels and doing an amazing job for three months and then saying see you guys later see you later i'm out bye you need to set them up for success, build them the, the plan and train the right people so that moving forward, okay, you've got a manager of social media. You've got someone that does blog posts or written articles after your games. You've got a plan in place for creating roster announcements before games, things like that. Build connections. Uh, you guys know Gary Coldwell's from Ontario, one of the greatest rugby people you'll ever meet. Nicest guy, flies all around the world taking pictures just because he loves the game and he's a passionate South African Canadian guy. There are passionate rugby people in your community that would easily help out in you creating content, creating marketing materials, taking photos, filming games. Uh, all of these people will do it for a meal after games on Saturday, or maybe even a jersey or a pat on the back. People that love rugby are always around and they're always willing to help out. Make friends with them and invite them to your club events, photographers, videographers, graphic designers, people like that. You don't have to do it all yourself. Aaron talked a little bit about this as well in terms of creating a, a voice and a brand. So as, you, as Aaron said, so the colors, the look, the feel, I think the Toronto Arrows have done an unbelievable job to showcase 
you know, they're Ontario's, Ontario's MLR team, they're Canada's MLR team, they, you know, they have the We the North vibe sort of thing of, you know, the one Canadian team, they're active in the community, they're developing players, things like that. They've done a really good job of creating a voice and a brand. Clubs really need to do that as well. How is your club perceived by the public? Is it an old boys club? Well, maybe it's time to change that. Maybe it's time to bring in some new imagery in terms of, you know, women or different demographics. Uh, what are your club and union's objectives? Are you guys trying to sell tickets? Are you trying to grow the sport? Are you trying to get more rug balls into the hands of, of people in the community? These are all things that your voice and your brand should be working towards. Why do people follow you and why do people, are they interested? And then move forward from that. So a lot of times at rugby clubs, the ones I've been a part of in, in BC, here in Halifax and, and all around media and especially social media is not a priority. Your coach is gung-ho on recruiting players. Your uh, general manager of your club is, is keen on getting sponsors. Uh, there's other people around the community that are you know, big at helping out in terms of medical and you know, getting minis involved in the game and things like that make media and social media a priority. Every single event that you guys throw, you should have pictures being taken. You should have posters being posted. You should have uh, media at the front and form, uh, the front and center of what you guys are doing to showcase, wow, rugby's really doing a great thing in our community. Look at all these kids running around with a ball in hand or look at all the trophies that our club is winning or, hey, on Sundays, we're volunteering by giving back to the community. Find room. I know it's not your budgets if you're coming in as interns and you're helping out, but help your club see the value in this that, yes, the people that are invested in the sport now are invested, but what about the next generation? How are we targeting these people and how are we getting them, you know, bought, bought into what we're trying to do? A lot of the things that you're trying to do, I want to make it as simple as possible by answering the who, what, where, when, why, and how. So when you're trying to invite uh, parents and minis to the, to the rugby field on the Saturday, make sure it's as easy as possible for people to understand the who, the what, the where, the when, the why, and the how. I don't want you guys to, you know, finish your time and people say, well, you know, the website's not up to date, or we can't find information on when games are, or if I wanted to find more about Rowan's Law, what is Rowan's Law? Where do I find more about that? Make things as easy as possible when you're putting things out to the public. And ask for help. Uh, Brock Smith is the communications manager for the Toronto Arrows. Call him up. Uh, ask him. Ask some questions about him. Call Rugby Canada. Call me and say, hey, I have a question about this. Is there anything I can do to target this type of people? Or is there really need for me to have a Twitter account in our, in our demographic? Or things like that. I would love to chat, you know, have a coffee via Zoom and, and, and chit chat. I'm, I'm always keen to share their, you know, support and to talk. Also, Follow what other unions are doing. Follow the All, all Blacks, follow England, follow Saracens, follow you know, teams in South Africa, follow other rugby clubs in Canada and USA and, and piggyback off of what they're doing. So every time you see a cool graphic on social media, screen capture it and say, hey, okay, the next one, we're going to do something like that. You don't have to reinvent the wheel here. You can just sort of keep an eye on it and ask for help and, and follow the lead of what other, other people are doing. So as I said earlier, uh, platforms is a big one. Um, websites, so that's in terms of match reports, blog posts, newsletters that land right in people's inboxes, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube. There's a gazillion platforms right now. And honestly, it's exhausting. It, it really truly is. And I'm a communications major, worked in communications for 10 years. I'll be the first one to admit there are too many platforms and it's exhausting. So as soon as you know that, we can... We can say, okay, and then try and get past it. So if I don't know how many platforms your, your club is currently on, which ones they're not on and they should be, and which ones that they're using that aren't having any success. So this is where you guys are going to have to do an inventory. And Ryan said, I think that's one of the projects that you guys are working on is an inventory. So is your, you know, is whoever's running your newsletter, are they putting 10 hours a week into it and only five people are reading it? well, maybe it's not really worth your time. Uh, are you guys putting regular content on Twitter and, and you know, not getting any traction? 
maybe not the right platform. Do you have a TikTok account and you, and you should? Well, maybe that's something you guys should build. Um, I'm not going to go too into depth because we're, uh, we're running out of time. Uh, I'm not going to go too into depth into each of these platforms. I think everybody knows, um, you know, the difference between Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and TikTok. But, you know, I'll, I'll, as I said, I'll send out this, this PowerPoint presentation as well. But Facebook, definitely an older gen generation. Uh, so Facebook has done a really good job being the number one platform for a long time because it is the central hub of information. That's where you can live stream games. That's where you can post scores. You can have each individual teams inside your club. You can have an under 19 has its own Facebook group. You know, the, you know, the senior men have its own Facebook group, senior women have its own Facebook group. That's a good platform, but it is definitely an older demographic. Uh, I'll sort of share these as well, do's and don'ts on Facebook. Um, Twitter is mostly used by sponsors, businesses, media, and journalists. Uh, Twitter is where information you know, happens on the fly. This is where you might want to put out game updates uh, as the game is happening. Not quite as important for rugby clubs. I'd, I'd, I'd say stick to Facebook and Instagram and, and the website and, and newsletter. But if you are interested in, in Twitter, it is a great platform to, to create discussions and share information as it's happening. Um, I'm assuming everyone on this call is on Instagram or has seen it or you know has spent far too much time during 2020 staring at it. It's popular, it's big, it's huge. This is where you're going to grow your 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 fan base. Your, sorry, your player base. You're going to grow your, you know your you know your players' love for your club. This is where you're going to share tons of information, photos, videos, and this is where I want you guys to have fun with it. Encourage your clubs to really get active. Put up videos every single day during the regular season. You know, well, I'll talk a little bit more about content later on in the, in the presentation, but. Instagram is absolutely huge and it's it's important for clubs to move move forward with it. So in terms of website and email newsletter, once again, it's not my job to tell you to do it or not to do it. I don't want you guys to show up at your rugby club and say, I want you on this, 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 and this. I'll help you for three months and then I'm out and then no one do it. I want you guys to be able to say to them, I think it would be really valuable for us to have a newsletter so we can update our sponsors, our family and friends, our players, and our general community on once a week on the happenings of our club. Okay, I'll start it for the first few months. And then who's going to take it on after that? Build the template so that it looks good. The graphics are good. The logos are good. The color scheme is good. And then build a plan for when you are no longer at the club, when you're busy with school or you're at another job, that someone else is doing it. I still read every Sunday the match report that lands in my e email news uh, email box from the James Bay Athletic Association that I played with for 10 years in Victoria. I still read it every Sunday and I haven't played for them in two years. I just love it. I love, you know, I know that it's coming in Sunday morning after the games on Saturday. It's got a few pictures. It's got a few jokes written into it. And that's just what I love to do. And so that's something that you guys can look into and a website. Some clubs have websites, some don't. Um, it is obviously a very valuable platform to relay information, can find facts and figures about the club. You know, my club in Victoria, James Bay, as I said, is, is the oldest sporting club uh, west of Montreal in North America, I think. So there's a lot of information about that and all the championships that have been won and the sponsors and things like that. So if you're going to do it, make sure you do it correctly and make sure the website is up to date and it looks good. And don't stretch yourself too, thi too thin by trying to have um, bios of every single player and headshots and stats and things like that. It's just too much. You're, you're not full-time people. You're not getting paid to do this. So it, it's up to you guys and, and to the people at the clubs to figure out a plan and say, okay, are we going to do this? Are we going to do this? Well, who's going to do it moving forward? And TikTok, uh, obviously an incredibly valuable platform for reaching a younger demographic, meant to be a lot of fun. Captions, text, songs, hugely popular. And this is a good one where you can, can take part during events. Highly recommend getting on it. Once again, building a plan for who's going to run it uh, once you are no longer with the organization. I know we're about five minutes to the top of the hour, so I'll keep going through this. Um, easy content examples. If I, I, I get asked all the time, Brian, how much am I supposed to be posting a week? 
if I knew that, I would be driving a Tesla, living on the beach in Southern California right now. There's, there's no easy algorithm of you have to post it this day on this time with this amount of content that looks like this. It, it, that's just not how it works. Social media is an ever-evolving, ever-flowing uh, thing that you have to find what works. You don't want to put up 25 Facebook posts in one day because people scrolling will go, uh, uh, uh and unsubscribe, unfollow, unlike, all that. So, but you also don't want to put up one a month because then you're sort of losing your audience and losing your, your database. And I get a lot of questions from a lot of unions in the Caribbean that don't have full-time people. They're like, well, I'm, I'm not a graphic designer. I'm not a photographer. I'm not a videographer. How do I create content that looks good? So here's just a few examples of some easy content that I just took some screen grabs of from the Caribbean. You know, simple photos, players running with ball in hand, smile on their face, wearing the team uniforms, looking good, fun captions. These are just easy examples that you can post. I want you guys to instill into your clubs that every event that happens, every minis event, every Saturday game day, every you know fundraiser, every uh, you know every club event. If you guys are you know um, helping out some in the community, doing a bottle drive, or if you're you know everyone's meeting at the club to do a weights to do a weight session or something like that, every single time take a couple of pictures and throw it up. Like it's just so easy to do and it looks good. And it's just some easy examples of content. It's just players arm in arm after a game, mud, mud on the jerseys, throw that up. It just looks good. It's engaging and people love it. Videos is another one that I cannot stress enough how important it is to have regular videos updated on your guys' channels. Top left, uh, is just a simple interview of Cam Dolan from USA. After they won a game, he's just saying, you know, uh, I thought we had a really good game today. Our fans were excellent. You know, it's nice to be 3-0 and this month and uh, looking forward to our game next week. 30-second video, looks good, easy, throwing it up on the channels. Bottom left, um, AJ McGinty at the Rugby World Cup in Japan last year, playing piano like Mozart, doing an amazing job, throwing up on the channels. Just a simple 30 second or one minute video posted. It looks good. Tons of engagement, tons of interaction. People love seeing that type of stuff. And that's the stuff that you should be posting on all of your social media pages. Uh, bottom right is a cool video that Rugby Mexico, they do before they play test matches. They do like a roster announcement. So they go one through 23 and they get the players to hold their arms like this and that. I know it's filmed on an iPhone. It looks good. It has the sponsor in the top right corner. It has the, the team's logo up in the top left corner. It's engaging. It looks good. It's interactive and it gives a shout to the sponsor. So that's something that you can do. In the top right corner, this is just a, a highlight from when Mexico scored to beat Paraguay last year. So I'll, I'll get in a little bit more in this presentation in terms of match highlights, but hugely important to be posting um, tries and big tackles and highlights and just showcasing all the great things that your guys' clubs are doing. So match and game day graphics. So if you follow social media, uh, rugby teams on social media, you'll know that a big one is when you announce a team, uh, one through 23, who's lining up at fly half, who's starting number eight, who's, you know, who's coming off the bench, things like that. Those are, those look really good and they get a ton of traction. Um, as you said earlier, Canva is a really good platform. There's, there's tons of, of free platforms that you can use to build these graphics and they look really good. As well as on the right, the, um, the, the, the match recaps. So who beat who and, and what was the score and you know some key information like that. These are easy graphics. You just have to have a plan in place of who's gonna do them and what they're gonna look like. So as I said earlier, how can I get photos without money to hire a photographer? I don't know how to edit a video. How can I use videos? I can't afford a graphic designer. How do I do these things? Well. Obviously, in a perfect world, you guys would all have access to a videographer, a graphic designer, a photographer, things like that. You guys need to find ways to get creative. And that's, I'm going to try and go through a few of these things as quickly as I can. 
obviously smartphones are the most advanced piece of technology uh, communications has ever seen. Um, and on these things, you have the ability to do so much. And there are tons and tons and tons of apps and settings and just it really is easy to take high quality pictures and videos and cut things together and just make it look excellent. So I would really encourage you to explore using your smartphones and trying to just get creative with different apps. Um, this is this slide is actually needs to be updated since then, but there's there's different platforms called Hootsuite, Later, Buffer, but then each platform, if you access them via your laptop, have their own built-in scheduling systems where you can create a plan for, okay, if the game day is on Saturday, we'll post uh, a picture in the morning, uh, on the Friday, the day beforehand, we'll put up the roster announcement. On the Thursday, we'll post, um, you know, players in the gym lifting weights. On the Wednesday, we'll do a hashtag way back Wednesday of when your club beat another team and a try that was scored or hashtag training Tuesday on the Tuesday where you get, a, you know, some players doing sprints and put up a fun video, things like that. You can manage all your platforms from one location and on Monday morning go, okay, I'm going to put this up on Monday, this up on Tuesday, this up on Wednesday, et cetera. And it tracks all your engagement, tracks all your analytics. And, and there's a lot of free, easy to use platforms. Um, Graphic design is obviously a really important one. You can do them yourself. Uh, a lot of graphics, Canva, Vector, Crello, they're free, they're relatively easy to use, and you don't need a, a graphic design degree or diploma in, in really just doing some simple editing. That being said, you guys are students. So you guys are all in the tech savvy generation that knows people who can whip together posters and videos and content at ease. Hey, maybe there's somebody at your school uh, or that's learning to be a graphic designer that's trying to build their portfolio. Maybe reach out to them and say, hey, you know, my club will give you a jersey if you can help us out for a few months by creating a few posters or creating some fun marketing material for us. You know, we'll buy, come down to the, road, the, the clubhouse, we'll buy you a beer or a pop after the Saturday. You can in, in, engage in the community. You know, obviously you guys aren't going to have you know, thousands of dollars in budgets to hire graphic designers, well, you're going to get creative and try and find ways to get around it. Video editing is another one. So iMovie, Magisto, VideoPad, OpenShot, these are simple and easy and free platforms where you can upload your video content, cut it, and just throw it up onto your channels. So game highlights, fun promotional videos, on-field, gym, training, things like that. There are ways that you guys can, can do these without being a professional videographer. And these are your cameras right here, right here. They're maybe not the best for filming, uh, you know, back-to-back -back 15s games because that'll make your shoulders sore from holding it up. But you can go to Costco and buy a $150 camera and film your games and cut them and throw them up on YouTube afterwards. It's simple. Same thing with photo editing. I don't need to get into that, but there's tons of platforms that you can use to crop, edit, slice, put text on top, etc. In terms of one of the big uh, opportunities for you guys to use social media marketing communications is events. Events are when people are really tuned in. I know it's this is a tough thing to say when we're smack dab in the middle of a pandemic and you know there isn't much rugby being played at all and everyone is craving to get back out in the field, but trust me, rugby will come back. Saturday is a rugby day, we'll come back. And if you have, you said, uh, one, of, one of you guys on this call said that your rugby season is four months long. Okay, that is four months of Saturdays where every single Saturday there is rugby happening. What is your plan for every single Saturday to, in, in, to engage your community, to post photos, to post videos, to create match reports? Look at it as every Saturday by Saturday by Saturday. These are when you're really going to spark your massive interest, grow your following, and engage your people. So as I on the left here, build a week-by-week -week plan for social media to delegate the responsibilities. Who's going to write the match report on Saturday? You don't have to do it. You might be playing. You might be setting up the tackle bags. You might be setting up the corner flags and washing the jerseys. I don't, you don't, you don't have to write a match report. You know, you can get somebody else, get one of the parents to do it, get someone, you know, an injured player to do it, something like that. 
find someone in the community that can act as a photographer. You don't need to have a, you know, two foot long $5,000 lens. You can just have a decent little camera, take some pictures. Players love posting pictures of themselves on social media. We love it. I do it myself. Everyone does it. There's a, there's a woman here uh, named Jeannie in Nova Scotia. Every Saturday she's at the rugby field and she just does it for the love of the game. Find that person, buy them dinner after rugby games, buy them a jersey or give it to them at the end of the year, give them a volunteer of the year award, make them come back and say, oh, every Saturday I love bringing my camera and showing up at the field and taking pictures. Because the more that me, a player, post it on my own channels, then the more it's out in the community. And the more that you post it on your club's channels, it's just the snowball effect. It gets bigger and it's seen in the community and more people are seeing rugby and social media. Um, putting up uh, scores while the games are happening, fun Instagram posts, uh, post-match interviews, people who scored the game-winning try, things like that. These are all easy uh, examples of content that you can use. So come nearing the end here. So there's just a few thoughts that I'll get to, and I know we've gone past our time, but what are your club's key objectives? Are your communications channels supporting these? If you're trying to grow minis and you don't put a single thing up on social media about minis, encouraging people to come or targeting parents, things like that, well, then your channels aren't really supporting. Is your club active on social media? And that is in a sense of different platforms posting regularly. If they're not, well, it's time to get on it. Are all of, here's one that I've said. So I've, I've shown this presentation to BC, Ontario, PEI, Alberta, and Nova Scotia. Are all of your games filmed? If not, why not? It's so simple. Go to, this, go to Costco and buy a camera for $100 and go to Future Shop and buy a $10 tripod and film the games, post them. People love watching games. It makes the quality of rugby better because people see the mistakes that they're making. You can do game analysis. Uh, match officials can do analysis of how they did in games. This is something that's so simple. It should be mandatory across the country. Film your games. Once again, number four, who is creating written recaps, social media content, video highlights. Once again, it's about building a plan that your club's going to be successful moving forward. Uh, and making sure that it's done and, and done well. Uh, summer internship, uh, that's something that you guys are doing here, right smack dab in the winter, but throughout the summer when the summer season is happening, well, maybe this is a chance where there's a communications college down the road where you can approach the, the professor at, at the communications college and say, hey, we're looking for a student for the summer that will run our social media pages, create content, do match reports. That is how I got my start, was just showing up at the field with a camera and a, taking it, doing interviews and doing match reports and writing content. That led me up to the national team, working for the Canadian Olympic Committee in the job that I have now. There's always a need for, for students and young people to create content and give them my email, my phone number, tell them to call me. I'm happy to train them and I'm happy to work with them. And number five, the last question there, what are you doing to build the voice of your team, your club, and your union? If I gave you $100,000 tomorrow, what would you do differently for marketing, social media, and communications? If you could think of five things that you would do if you had $100,000, okay, try and find the ways to do those five things without the $100,000. And coming back to the graphic at the beginning that I said we would come back to, content, Messaging slash voice slash branding. Timing, timing is key. There's no point in putting up a match report two weeks after the game happened. It needs to be timely. It needs to get up, it needs to be posted. And then platform, figuring out if photos or videos are better to go up on Facebook or Twitter, or Instagram, TikTok, et cetera, et cetera. I've talked enough. So, I know we're a little bit over on time here, but uh, does anybody have any questions? I Rhea? have a quick question for like social media for something that maybe like we can do. Should we set up like a template that whoever runs social can do? Like, especially for like, um, like knowing your audience, like what Aaron was talking about. Like if we want 
like let's say I don't know if our men's team has qualified for Tokyo but I know our women's team has like should we post content like towards like high school age girls and be like this could be you one day like and do that kind of template and the same for like Instagram and Facebook and help them figure that out so that like they just kind of need to put in like maybe like a witty caption and like a video or a photo and it be done. Yeah, absolutely. So there, there's tons of different types of content that you can create, but so there's content that your club is creating. So there's, um, you know, all of your tournaments and functions and events and matches and fundraisers and all that, that's your club and your content. You should be creating a calendar of events going, okay, every single week, this is what we have throughout our entire year. Same thing, all your events that Aaron was throwing, every single one of those events, we need to have someone to take a couple pictures and put up on Instagram afterwards. Um, we need to have someone at every game, every Saturday doing a, even if it's 300, 400 words, doing a match report. All that stuff is great. And that's about your team and your, uh, you know, your, your club and your community. Then split it down the middle. And then there's just pure rugby fun and rugby engagement because rugby is not played every single day. There are, you know, COVID there's eight months, 10 months where nothing is being played. You can't just let your, your social media channels go stagnant and not post anything for eight months. You have to find things to put up on your channels. If Canada's women's sevens team win gold in Tokyo. Yeah. You repost that you share that you make that go viral. If world rugby puts up a video of, uh, here are, you know, kicking strategies or, you know, things to look out for on defense, share that, take the, the, the content that's being created by the big organizations that have money and throw that up on your, you know, U18 girls Facebook group and say, Hey ladies, before training tomorrow night, make sure you watch this video from world rugby on, you know, stepping or how to kick or things like that. Use the, use the content that's being created around the world and promote that, but then also create your own as well. Anyone else? Awesome. Ryan, I think we're gonna give you a chance to, to take a breath now too. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. Um, yeah, fantastic. I mean, so much, uh, so much stuff, so much content, so much, uh, so much information. Um, and, and like you said, I think we're happy to share um, a lot of this stuff, all of this stuff. And I really appreciate you both taking the time. Um, we will, as I've been talking, if anybody has any questions, throw it out to you. If you have any kind of final thoughts, questions before we let Aaron and Brian go. Just one thing for me, we, we had an a, a online forum last week and, and one of the things that came up was uh, talking about getting yourself a mentor and asking for help. And that was one of the, the topics that was part of the women's forum that was really cool was the people who are involved in the game of rugby love the game of rugby. So if there's someone at a club or someone at an organization or if there's something that you're trying to learn, ask them, hey, let's go for coffee or let's chat via Zoom. Or if there's something that you wanna learn, just pick up the phone and call people or meet up with them because people in rugby are keen to help out and keen to support, and especially a time right now where there's not much going on. If you ever wanna learn, hey, Rugby Canada, what do you guys do for coaching or development? Or you know, how are you separating high performance and club and blah, 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 all that stuff. Just, just pick up the phone and call and ask. There's tons of people that are willing to help. I have a quick question for Aaron. Um, you talked about professional development. So would that be like teaming up with Rugby Ontario to run those like referee camps and those coaches camps? Because I know like we've had one in my area that I can like really think of over the past like four years. So would that be like reaching out and then like really advertising it like the week before and then like a few days before? And because I know the one that I'm thinking of was like posted about like maybe two days before. <laughs> yes. So I think professional development can be a lot of different things. It can be an actual full on course, like a, like a coaching course or a, like a rookie rugby instructor training. Um, but I think you can think about professional development in a lot of different ways from a, like a referee perspective, you could just do a professional development course on, you know, positioning and get maybe 
like I think I don't know if Rose is still in Ottawa but uh like get somebody like Rose is the only referee I know outside of Ryan uh in Ontario so uh but like get somebody like Rose who's refereed at a high level to run a session and just talk about you know positioning and that's for young refs so that are that's one of the things they really struggle with at first um or like a zoom call to review some video on we did one on the breakdown and it's talking about specifically the breakdown and what a referee looks like or looks at and then how a coach would coach that so i think uh, professional development can be a lot of different things um what i probably recommend especially if you're you're looking to do that is maybe survey uh, if you can start with start with maybe surveying your coaches and your refs on what type of topics they'd want in terms of professional development and then coming up with maybe you do a series like a forum series and you do every Wednesday in a month so you do four different topics and it's specifically focused on just coaches and you talk about this and this and this and this or whatever it is that you, you come up with uh, I think that could be really valuable and I would say a week ahead of time just like your two days ahead of time is too late um especially with like i mean calendars right now everyone's like most people like i know i kind of work week to week of i can change some things around but i would say at least a month ahead of time for anything that you expect people to show up for is going to help increase your your attendance but i would say get creative with professional development um it's amazing what you can learn when you start to break down the game into specific chunks or even like same with coaching as well of like let's coach the scrum and get, um, you know, I'm sure you, you could get somebody that plays on the blues or pro you probably have some national team players in Ontario that could lead a session on, this is how we, this is how I play as a front row player, or this is how I coach the scrum. And that's super, super valuable. So I think you can get creative in that space. Did that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Awesome. Any other final questions from anybody? Eight seconds of silence. It's the, it's the awkward zone. <laughs> um, awesome. Well, I, I think a big thank you to, to Aaron and Brian for taking up some time this evening and chatting with us and some giving us some really quality content. I have a whole ton of